Let's get into this game a little bit. 33-30, overtime victory. Vikings win it. Justin Jefferson was phenomenal. Here, here's a cool stat. Since 1991, only two teams have won a game after turning the ball over on downs in a goal-to-go situation with under two minutes remaining, and it's in back-to-back weeks. It's last week with the Buccaneers and the Rams, and then this week with the Vikings and the Buffalo Bills. Pretty shocking. All right, so what's like – Well, here's another one yeah. that, that, you'll, that right. you'll appreciate. Right, right. It was only the second time since the merger that a team took the lead on a defensive touchdown in the final minute of regulation. Do you know the other time well, that happened? Oh, I, I think I do. And I heard you talking about this yesterday. And I would have guessed this anyways, but I, I would have guessed it was Joe Pasarczyk yeah. and the fumble, right? Miracle Herm Middle Edwards Lions. and yep. all that, right? Got, yeah, got Phil Sims drafted right Introduced there. Introduced the victory formation to football. Yeah, because right. Before that, they would. They would just keep hand running it plays. off. Right. Hey, we could just take a knee instead and right. not have to risk having a fumble in that spot. But that's only two times since the merger that it happened. And of course, they they blew the lead. They took the lead. When the Eagles took the lead, they won the game. When the Vikings took the lead, they still had to work a little bit. Yeah, they did. Well, they had to deal with Josh Allen felt with like time left. It was left. never going to end. And I knew it was going to end in some crazy fashion. Right. It wasn't going to be a conventional finish right. with all that shit that happened. Yeah. No. Un- unbelievable. All right, so what so get, give me like, you know, your your thoughts of your team here. How much better do you feel about them? You've been one to sit here and can't, you've been saying like I don't think we're as good as our record. Not you know. I don't do the Yeah, you, know, you, you you do too. I don't do the week. All right. Thing. Well, it is it's in your mind, okay? So screw what you say. I know it's in your mind. You're going home to watch the replay of the game with your I son wanna, later today. I want to do it for <laughs> Purely analytical journalistic purposes. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Kiss my ass. All right. So <laughs> either way, though, like, no, are we – how much further did that make you feel as far as the confidence of your team? Like, you guys are good. All right? I'll well, give my two cents at first. It doesn't matter what I think. What yeah. matters is what guys in the locker room think. And when I talk to Patrick Peterson they believe. about it, they believe. And this is the thing where they have faith that in those moments when they're down – Yep. 10, 17, whatever, somebody's going to step up yeah. and make a play. Somebody's going to make something happen. And, Chris, I think what the other side of this is, the Vikings will believe when they're in these tough moments that something good is going to happen. And eventually what will occur is the opponents yeah, start will to think that start too. thinking, oh, here man, it comes. Oh, we're in their situation here again. Here it comes. Yeah. I, I always think of the example of – I didn't have a brother, but, you know, the little brother trying to beat the big brother in ping pong. There's a point where the little brother is finally leading, but you yeah, start, start gripping, to tense up. You start gripping the, you, you want know, it so here bad. it comes, here yeah. it comes. Right. It happens all the time, here it comes. Even though it's a different opponent every week, I just think you know, when you when you hear and see Justin Jefferson after the game, expressing a very high degree of confidence that this tells us this is our year. This tells us we're going to the Super Bowl. They believe it. And the problem is, for the opponents, they are going to, well, maybe it is their year. At some point, you see, when you see what happened yesterday, how do you not come away from that game thinking, maybe it is their year. He makes that catch. Maybe it is their day. And they still thread needles repeatedly to make it their day. You, you, You start to think, I mean, shit. I, I, listen, I hear you. It's, it's tangible. It is tangible. There's it no doubt written. about it. it there, there, like there's a lot of that. But they're it gonna is get, written. They're going to get teams here that are going to be just as stubborn oh, as they are, you know, who are going to go, wait, wait we're not going to mess this game up at the end of the game. So and then they're going we'll to grip the paddle a little too tight when they're up seven points in the fourth quarter. We'll see. Either way, I'm, 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 I love the Vikings. I'm not ready. I don't know what it is. I'm not ready to say they're like a dominant football team, even though they're Good. sitting here at eight and one. I, I'm not. I mean, Keep even in that it. game Hater. yesterday, there was Hater. no moment in that game where they really dominated the game. At any stretch, a stretch. That's where it just, it's just odd. I'm not even trying to be they, a jerk. It's fun, no, no. It's just it's like just, last week. They go up, they have a great opening drive. Right. They go up 7 nothing. Right. And then they just like go to sleep until the fourth quarter. I mean, it, it really was pretty amazing being down 27 10, then having the long run by Dalvin the, Cook. That, that, he's the guy. That's the underrated part of the game because the quick score there, yeah. of course, gave them he, extra he, time to play and, with. And I was still like, ah, but shit, they're still down by 10. Well, points. they went, drove right back down the field, Buffalo, right but, after right, it. Right, right. And yeah. it was the, it was the, the interception. I, I got something for you. Yeah. Because after talking to Peterson about both interceptions, yeah. and this fits with something we talked about last week. Number one, they rely too much on Josh Allen yep. to save their ass. Always. And number two, they're not doing enough self-scouting because it was clear from talking to Patrick Peterson that both of those interceptions were the product of film study, yeah. of knowing the tendencies in the red zone, knowing that 
what to do when Josh Allen breaks the pocket. Well, you said First in the second did, one he knew once the guy knew, lined up that he knew he, he was, was going to kind of go inside. To the inside. Right. He was going to break to the inside. Right. And so he was waiting for him. When he saw him make the break, he forgot about him. He's like, I know he's going to throw gonna this play ball. The ball. I'm going to play the ball. Yeah. And there it was. On the first one, as soon as Allen, you know, when, the, when Allen breaks the pocket, right. he pushed Isaiah McKenzie out of bounds. And you can see on the replay, McKenzie is standing there flat-footed. He doesn't even get in the pursuit after Peterson makes the interception. He's like a spectator. Right. So Peterson shoved him out of bounds, legal hit at that point yep. once the quarterback's out of the pocket. Right. And then he he saw, I think he thought it was Dawson Knox flashing past him, and he knew he was going to throw it. So th this, is the, this is the great challenge week in and week out, day in and day out, using your hours to try to stay ahead of the film study that you know your opponents are doing. And are the Bills staying ahead of it, or are they just too content to say, we got Josh Allen and you don't? So we don't need to worry about those details. Well, there's a little bit of arrogance there right now. And there is too much on Josh Allen. Again, you know, here's another big game where it's just it's all on him to your point. You're right about that. Um, those are huge moments of the football game, though. They really were. I mean, they were remarkable. And that, I guess that's why I just look at, you know, even that, that. That's a remarkable moment. Fourth and two. The game changes even if they – if they just get an interception or don't get an interception and he throws it away or it's an incomplete pass, you got the ball at the two yard line, it's going to be a different yeah. aspect as he far as driving to down. Right. You got to go down. And he told, I said, What's your thought process in that moment right. when you just don't take a knee? And he said, The flow of the play was more to the other side of the field. So I thought I could get it yeah. to me right. and maybe an offensive lineman and the quarterback. And uh, <laughs> I said, What happened to the 30 yard line? Because it's just like, you completely like it was like the, the the power cord got pulled out. Yeah. He said it was a long drive and I'm old. <laughs> and he said I just ran out of gas in the 30s. And I know I wasn't going 105 yards. Yeah. I just ran out of gas. In the uh, that's amazing. Uh, it really is. I, I all right. So you you obviously believe in their their the magic the mojo they got going the belief. I also am aware that this is part of the setup. That that this is all like. Come on, come on, believe, believe. And then we're going to rip your heart off and oh, mom, shiba, oh, mom, shiba. I feel like that's still you coming like at some coming. point. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're, you're, that's the way you are. You're Dr. Doom. But I've got 50 f***ing a... years of it. Am I allowed to say that <laughs> You are. This? Of course right. you are. Right. Yep, it's the it's, Chris Sims. I'm out here. I mean, nobody's around, but it just feels odd to be uh, saying it's swearing it out loud. Out Trust me, I know. Yeah. It, it is. It's odd. It took me a while to kind of get used to it myself. Yeah, what, five minutes? Uh, well, no, no. It's weird. I feel bad sometimes because people are working. You around, yeah. Well, people are working. Or, if it's, or if it's bring an obscure relative to work day. You yeah, just never right. know what kid's going to be around. You start popping right. Pete's off kids were drooling on these mics the other day, so now we uh, all have that to, to deal oh, I, with. I spit all over the microphone back in. Oh, back there? Yeah, and the, all the, over I today. don't know why they don't just let me have my own mic. All right? I mean, I, I really don't. I'm going to have to change that. All right, so anything else you want to say about that game? Because we're going to move on. I feel like we've hit it enough. You know, again, Josh Allen, Buffalo, I think it is It's. it's They'll be fine. too much on him. They will be fine. He is obviously too loose with the football here as of late. I mean, that, that's got to be corrected. Self-scout, do whatever you want. But the one thing we've seen here as of late is just – inexplicable interceptions and uh that that's really hurting their team last week it gave the jets a bunch of points took points off the board for them the la you know the week before that against green bay packers and then yesterday you know and again i do think part of that is the fact of there's a lot on him and when you have to again how many amazing plays did he make yesterday yeah you know how many times was it third and ten third oh. and eight third and twelve and he gets the first down but uh right now it might be going a little too hair on fire loosey-goosey i got two points real quick yeah one, the NFL admitted that they should have reviewed the Gabe Davis sideline catch yeah, on of the final driver regulation, right. and it would have been overturned. Do they admit that if the Vikings don't win the game? Ooh. That's what I want to know. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Easy to be candid right. when the team that got screwed at the drive through yeah, finally wins. Ends up, ends up winning. Second, right. the Josh Allen fumble yeah, the at the goal snap, line. quarterback snap, right. Miles Simmons and I were talking about this earlier. Yeah. How do you even prepare for that? Like – do you carve out time in practice? Is there ever a time where you can simulate that, even come close to simulating that? Did, did you ever practice a situation like we that did. when you we were in the NFL? We did practice backed up, like backed up situations, right? And we did. And in training camp, I can remember one or two times doing like a quarterback sneak kind of thing to but kind of get a, us but out. But you got a red jersey on too, so it's never going to be like it's it never, really is it's in a never, game. The intensity is never the same. Exactly right. It, the, the, the best – thing that you get prepared for is if usually if you're on the other goal line going in you know you heard me say last night I, 
I wasn't shocked to see a fumbled snap in that situation because think about like what you're talking about here. It's Mitch Morse, the center. It's two guys on either side of him. The Vikings moved right before the snap to kind of mess with it. So now he's, wait, I'm going to block here to my right the whole time. And now, oh, wait, as I'm getting ready to snap, the guy's going to my left. I have to adjust. And then the center is nervous. He can sometimes be a little short with the ball and not put it in the sweet spot. And then he's making an abrupt, like, whoa, I got to get low. This guy's shooting down and trying to yeah. clog things it's up. It's the Shiano. It's the acceptable and legitimate Shiano Exactly move. right. And it, it does lead to the ball being off kilter. And, again, it looked like Josh Allen got his hands on it, but I bet you it wasn't right in the sweet spot. And then, you know, he's trying to move forward and get some momentum at the same time, and that was that. But that was not as, it's not as easy as maybe we make it seem I at, hope, at times. I hope I hope that that play doesn't encourage, and I don't think it will, yeah. others to dust off the Shiano strategy of normal victory formation if it's a one-score game. I, I hope it won't. I don't think it will. Teeing off this like that. Different. No, this you can different. freak out the center maybe right. and get lucky. Right. Uh, hopefully not. Still, this was it's different. It's still, I mean, what the hell? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there. Thinking, well, it was fun while it lasted. It was memorable. Hey, I figured it was gonna. I, I was saying, I'd rather they lose by forty than have this happen. You'd already, you, you, thrown in the white towel. It was done. And then all of a sudden, I'm thinking, I thought it was gonna be a safety. I didn't. I had no idea that it was loose ball. I thought maybe they tackled him in the end zone. And then all of a sudden, it's like, holy, holy, holy shit. They, they got the ball. It, it's, it's the craziest thing ever. And I, then, I, really, and then it's like. Josh Allen's got enough time to go down and score a freaking touchdown and win the game in regulation. Yeah, I know. Well, it's never over with him, but it is crazy. And again, I sit there in this game and, and Minnesota fans, I don't mean to be a jerk, but I just look at it and, and felt like the better team on the field is the Buffalo Bills. I don't know. I don't know. Can you depend on miraculous and the other team making, you know, boneheaded mistakes on a regular basis here? They, they had they had enough they had, they had enough, enough good. miracles happen in that one game to qualify like three different people for canonization. Yeah, I, I know. I know that's I guess that's why though I'm not bought in as them being an elite powerhouse, even though I know they're going to the playoffs and they're gonna right now, I mean they're gonna host a home playoff game. Well if anyone can blow it, they can. So. And, and it's funny because I'm starting to look at the playoff tree. It's like Aaron Rodgers as the seven seed, Minnesota is the two seed. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, uh, Tom Brady coming to Minnesota. Come at some yeah. point. Oh boy, here we go. Because I've been saying all along, Kirk Cousins versus these guys. But doesn't a, an outcome like yesterday elevate how Kirk Cousins views himself? It, I don't know. It, it should. Has to, I mean, it should. And and the, the the quote to Peter King from Justin Jefferson breaking the huddle on that fourth down and eighteen play. Cousins just said to Jefferson, be ready. I may just throw it up to you. And it worked. How does that not give everybody involved confidence? So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. They've got Cowboys, short week, Thanksgiving night, Patriots, right. Jets after that, three straight home games. Yep. Then they go to Detroit, and then they've got Colts, Giants, five out of six games at home. No more outdoors games until Lambeau Field Week 17, Soldier Field Week 18. Table set. Table we'll see. Set. We'll see. All right. Let's get on some other game. Hey, he's not a big fan, everybody. He just has their schedule uh, remembered and knows where they're well, playing. Well, remember, for the a next couple weeks ago, I was so. trying, I had a really great point and I could not get it out because I'd forgotten the schedule. There was something about, but after one of these games, they got five out of six at home. And now it starts now, five out of six yeah, at home. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. And they have a great home field advantage. Um, there, there's no question about that. All right. Let's get to some other games. Can I get Sunday off and go to the game? I wonder if I could pull Well, that. you probably could pull it off. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. Videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Farid, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims on Button. Peace out.